So we're going to discuss the decolorization of crystal violet. But first, maybe we should talk about what crystal violet is exactly. Well, it's a chemical that appears to be a dark greenish yellow powder. But when we mix it with water, it turns into a vibrant violet solution. And at the molecular level, the crystal violet molecule looks like this. The red dots in the structure represent the electrons that form the chemical bonds. There are also some hydrogen atoms in the molecule, but they aren't shown here because it would get very crowded. And we can see that the more crystal violet powder we add to the water, the darker the solution becomes. So what is it about the crystal violet molecule that makes the solution so very, very violet? The answer can be found in its structure. An interesting aspect of crystal violet structure is the fact that its entire structure is in resonance. Now you may be asking yourself, what is resonance? Well, let's look at a simpler molecule first. Benzene, which has six carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms, has two resonance structures. It can be drawn like this or like this. But it doesn't really exist in either of these forms. The delocalized electrons rotate around the benzene ring so quickly that they are effectively shared by all the atoms, which creates one and a half bonds between carbon atoms instead of alternating single and double bonds. If we look back at crystal violet, we can draw many resonance structures because electrons are delocalized across the entire molecule. The delocalized electrons cause crystal violet to absorb light in the visible part of the light spectrum. This is why crystal violet is colored. But you don't have to take my word for it. We can actually measure how crystal violet absorbs light in the laboratory using an instrument called an ultraviolet visible spectrophotometer. So let's do that. First, we have to put some of our solution into a cuvette. We then place the cuvette into the holder inside the spectrophotometer. Now, when we take a measurement of our solution, the spectrophotometer will send a beam of light through our solution at whatever wavelength I set. For this experiment, I have set the wavelength range from 290 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And now we can see the data that the spectrophotometer produced. It appears that our solution absorbs light over a range of colors, and the peak absorption is at 590 nanometers. If we overlay the visible spectrum onto our graph, it looks like our solution is absorbing the most light in the yellow range. If it's absorbing light in the yellow range, why is our solution violet? Well, we don't see the color the solution absorbs. We see the colors the solution doesn't absorb. And generally, we will see the complementary color of the color the solution absorbs the most. And the complementary color of yellow is violet. Now that we know why crystal violet is violet and how we can measure just how violet it is, we're ready to explore how to decolorize it. So again, the answer lies with its structure. As we discussed before, the electrons are moving throughout the entire molecule very quickly. However, the electrons are not spread out evenly. Since the nitrogen atoms on the outside of the structure have a higher electronegativity, they pull the electrons towards them and away from the center carbon atom. This leaves the center carbon atom with a slightly more positive charge. The positive charge of the central carbon can now attract a chemical species that has a negative charge. Of course, the crystal violet molecule won't react with just any species. It has to be a reactive species. A chemical species like hydroxide reacts beautifully. When the hydroxide ion comes close to the central carbon atom, they react to form a covalent bond. When this happens, crystal violet no longer has a positive charge. Additionally, the new carbon-oxygen bond prevents electrons from moving throughout the structure, and resonance is now limited to the aromatic rings. So the new structure will no longer absorb light at 590 nanometers, and it won't produce a violet color for us to see. So we have successfully decolorized crystal violet. But let's explore one last thing. What if we wanted to decolorize crystal violet even faster? You could probably imagine that the more hydroxide we put into the solution, the faster the hydroxide would find the crystal violet molecule and the faster the solution would be decolorized. 
This, too, can be verified experimentally. Let that be our last task. Here we have four solutions. They all have the same amount of crystal violet in them, but we're going to vary the amount of hydroxide we put in them. So let's say the solution on the right has X amount of hydroxide. The next solution will have 2X, the next will have 3X, and the last solution on the left will have 6X. So now let's see how long it takes for the crystal violet to decolorize. In summary, crystal violet appears violet because the resonance in the structure allows it to absorb light in the visible spectrum. When the crystal violet molecule finds a hydroxide ion, they react, the resonance is disrupted, and the crystal violet can no longer absorb light in the visible spectrum. Therefore, it's decolorized.